just make sure that you really take your time with it. So just don't rush. And then I like to record people all the way through, but if you make a mistake, that's it's okay, don't worry. You can just stop and pause and start again at the beginning. It's 1980. I'm seven years old on vacation in Karachi, Pakistan. I follow her into the dark entrance up two flights of stairs. We pause outside a badly scratched door and my aunt rings the bell. Good? Yeah. Do you think it sounds better? I think so. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, great. Thank you. That's it. Two years ago, I took part in a workshop with Story Center. It felt really important that we organize this workshop so that we can have other women who either have undergone female genital cutting, female genital mutilation, or know of women in their families or others in their community members who have undergone it, for them to tell their own stories in their own words. I chose to tell this particular story because I feel very misunderstood. I chose to tell this particular story in the workshop to highlight how traumatizing the experience of being cut is. I think before speaking out, before taking a stance, before figuring out your own viewpoint, first you need to understand fully what's happened so you can reflect and move on from there and start to heal. And I would like other survivors of FGM just to stand out, to get that strength, to be able to step up and also to talk about the pain. Even though this is a harmful practice, we can learn to forgive each other and we can hope with that forgiveness to be able to prevent it to future generation of girls. Initially, I thought sharing my story with the group would be difficult because um, there are a lot of sort of raw emotions that I still had. Sharing the story the first day uh, was a bit of a surprise to me because I became emotional and this happened 70 years ago. It was difficult to really talk about it because it feels very selfish. Um, a lot of people were telling their stories about their own cutness, and I don't remember my own. I haven't really shared my story um, publicly. This was my first time doing it with a big group. I was very nervous about it initially because I didn't think I could do that much in three days. I'm really new to speaking out. I just started to get involved with advocacy and activist groups just earlier this year and before that I kind of sat with my own disagreement with FGC. And in that sense it helped me to overcome some of the shame that has lingered with me as a result of being cut to this day. I've seen growth within me, I've grown and uh, I've also enjoyed you know that sisterhood, the unity that you know every other participant showed. And it's actually strengthened my my love for my community and you know even though I disagree with this one practice that love is still very strong and it's it's a part of who I am. I'm hoping that viewers will realize that female genital mutilation is not just something that happens to people of a different color in a faraway land. Supporters of gentle cutting claim that the cutting in the Bora community is just like a nick or a scrape that causes no harm and in fact may enhance sexual pleasure. Through my story, I want to explain how in fact it is a form of violence that has remained and foreshadowed my life. I really hope that when people watch my video that they will understand that I, I love my mother and yes, I did undergo this and she did take me to have FGC done or Katna done, but she was a great mother and she did what she thought was right at the time. I hope people will realize that FGC is complicated. It's not just a, a one-sided, one-dimensional kind of issue. And also that, you know, um, mother-daughter, mother-child relationships can be very complicated. You can still love your mother very much and still maybe question some of the decisions that she made.
One of my more immediate goals is to take all the really important messages that I heard and take them home and talk with the people around me first, because I think if everybody starts those conversations, then little things add up to big things. In the future, I hope to reach out to um, individuals who might be against the practice of FGC in the community, but they're just afraid to speak out for whatever reasons. There is a hope for young girls out there if we can only unite together uh, all over the world and say no to FGM. And I want people to know that it's okay. You know, it doesn't change your identity. It doesn't change who you are. The hope is that as we share these stories, we can inspire other women and other men even to the, from communities where this might be occurring to help uh, speak up publicly about it and really stop female genital cutting from being a taboo topic that is only talked about in private circles to something that is public and something that we all can recognize is a harmful practice that we need to end.